Bueno, ¿qué pasa, cracks? ¿Cómo estamos? Ya estamos a jueves, ¿eh? ¿Cómo pasa volando la semana? Bueno, ¿cómo os va la semana de trading, gente? ¿Habéis operado mucho? Hoy ha habido volatilidad, ¿eh? Vaya asquito de semana. Lunes, martes, miércoles, todo estancado para arriba, para abajo, tirón arriba, tirón abajo. Y hoy sale una noticia y para arriba, para abajo, venga, volatilidad, vamos, vamos, vamos. Bueno, ¿cómo os va? A mí, la verdad, tengo que reconocer que me va... Genial, tengo que reconocer que me ha ido muy bien esta semana y espero y estoy con un par de entradas más y de momento van bien y espero acabar la semana mejor, así que os deseo lo mejor a todos vosotros, sé que lo estáis haciendo muy bien, estáis pasando un montón de mensajes por privado de vuestras operaciones, algunos de vosotros no os lo creéis, de hecho tengo algún mensaje de, de hoy que, que me, ha dicho, me han dicho, eh, dice, tremendo, dice al final vas a tener razón con tus métodos. Y dice, y dice, increíble. Y dice, increíble, ¿no? Os, os, os lo juro, mira, mira, aquí está, no sé si se ve. A ver, un momentito, ahí. Me dice, es que no se ve. Con el, a ver, si enfoca bien. Dice, increíble. Y digo, es que es así de fácil. Sell side by side. Es que es así de fácil, gente. Punto de interés, toma de liquidez, vamos a la otra toma de liquidez y listo, gente. La verdad que tengo que decir que estoy súper contento de que toda la comunidad os vaya tan bien. La verdad que he visto un antes y un después del curso que estamos haciendo. Recordar que este domingo ya es la última clase, finito, se acabó. Y también deciros que es el último curso gratuito que doy. Ya no, ya, ya no doy más, se acabó. Se acabó. He dado muchos cursos y muy buenos. He dado el primero de Institucional, el segundo de Smart Money y tenéis el de Wyckoff, además de el de Armónicos, Estrategias, tenéis un montón de cosas. Así que, finito, gente. Mi trabajo yo creo que he cumplido muy bien. Quizá dentro de un par de años me decida hacer otro cursito más, pero yo creo que hemos dado mucha información muy buena y tengo que decir, lo siento, gente, pero ya el resto de información ya va destinada a cursos. Pero, de todas formas, tengo que decir que me siguen llegando a día de hoy decenas de mensajes al día y todas son de agradecimiento que ha mejorado mucho vuestro trading. Así que gente, súper bien por vosotros, no liquidity, no gain y a seguir así y ser la mejor comunidad de trading, no de habla hispana, del mundo, del mundo. Bueno gente, eh, lo siento, eh, tengo que decir que actualmente ahora mismo somos 25 en el chat y voy a decir la frase que hace magia. ¿Sabéis? Una frase que hace magia, magia, pues hago desaparecer la gente cuando, cuando yo hago esta magia. Y es que hoy toca ver, hoy sí, sin piedad, los vídeos de Inner Circle Trader. Sí. Y ahora se hace la magia, ahora empezaremos a bajar de 25, nos quedaremos 5. No os preocupéis. Pero gente, ¿de dónde creéis que yo he aprendido? Ya somos 24, ya se está yendo la gente. Si no hay salseo y no hay cosas rápidas de 5 minutos, no os interesa. ¡Qué gentuza! ¡Qué gentuza que estáis hechos! Bueno, gente, yo tengo que decir una cosa. Eh, yo sí he aprendido, es del material de, de Michael Hudleston, del material. Ahora, yo tengo que decir una cosa y sé que con esto seré funado, seré funado. Del material de Michael hay mogollón de paja, ¿eh? Mogollón de paja. Hay que filtrar y ver las cosas que realmente funcionan. Y yo tengo que decir que el cursito que os he, estado, os, eh, os he estado dando... Mira, somos 20, qué barbaridad, han desaparecido 5. Esto es increíble. Os lo juro, es la palabra mágica. Es decir, vamos a ver los vídeos de Michael y desaparece la gente. <risa> en serio, gente, de verdad. Oye, a ver, yo no, no yo me los he comido los vídeos. Joder, para, para aprender es que no queda otra. Es que es, que es como el, el, el sarampión, yo ya lo he dicho. Hay que pasar el sarampión, una vez ya lo pasa estás inmune. ¿Vale? Bueno, gente, no me enrollo más, que si no me tiro aquí la tarde hablando. Eh, vamos, 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 vamos allá. Bueno, vamos allá. Eh, no, creo que me he equivocado de pantalla, ¿eh? Dejarme un momentito, un momentito, ¿eh? Un momentito. Que creo que me he equivocado de pantalla. Mm... Pantalla, ventana, medios. A ver, ¿esta qué pantalla es? Cambiar, cambiar a esta. Ahora sí. Vale, ahora sí. Es que se me ha desprogramado el, 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 el este. Vale, vamos allá. The Inner Circle Trader. The Inner Circle Trader. Sin piedad. No nos asustemos. Toca verlo y toca hoy sí chuparnos uno de esos vídeos listas de reproducción. Mentorship 2022. Y nos toca chuparnos, si no me equivoco, el 12, el vídeo 12. Sí, aquí está, señores. El vídeo 12. 
hora y cuarto. <risa> Nos quedamos dos, lo sé. Nos quedamos dos. Vamos a verlo. Hay que pasar por esto. Gente, si queréis aprender y queréis mejorar en el trading, eh, es lo que toca. ¿Vale? Vamos allá. Por cierto, que tengo que decir que a velocidad 1,75 se queda en media hora, porque ya sabéis que Michael no se nota cuando le pongo la velocidad 1,75, ¿ok? Vamos a ir comentando el vídeo, vamos a ir parando y vamos a ir comentando el vídeo, gente. A ver, Market Structure for Precision Technicals. Vale, venga, va. Mola los títulos de Michael, ¿eh? So we're looking at episode 12. This lesson and lecture is going to be on the topic of market structure for precision technicians. Now, admittedly, going into this, this is an advanced price action theory. You're going to have a lot of questions. It's going to cause all kinds of anxiety for those that just feel like you have to learn it the first time you watch a video. Trust me, you will not and you cannot learn this in one video. Okay? This is actually going to be a lesson even my paid mentorship group has yet to see. Okay? So I'm going to give you something that's fresh, something that is deep, that will allow you to go into your charts and start studying a little bit more, well, deeper than the normal higher, high, higher, low idea that is made up of the retail view of market structure. All right, here is the Nasdaq March contract for 2022. Bueno, ya, right ya la intro ya ha dicho que es algo más allá de ver mm, bajos más bajos o altos más altos, que es eso es de retail. <laughs> the forex traders in my group. When are you ever going to talk about your dollar? <laughs> well, let me remind you. What I'm teaching works in forex, okay? It works in stocks, it works in bonds. It's up to you to decide what asset class you're going to work with, okay? So I'm teaching price. This is the asset class that's moving around nicely, so I'm using it as a medium, okay? You could just as easily go into a Aussie dollar. You know, or pound yen chart, and you'll see these things happening as well. Okay, trust me, we'll get into forex again. Okay, I haven't abandoned forex. I just want to mine this vein that's available in volatility right now with the index features. All right, so obviously we can see with benefit of hindsight that the things we were looking for in price action has come to fruition. We were looking for the run below these lows in here. We got that. We were looking for a run and rebounds back up into this area. I got it. Did so handsomely. Broke lower overnight with all the wartime things that are going around the globe, and you know what I'm referring to. Uh, that caused a little bit of excitement on the downside. And then we're back above the short-term low. I'm not convinced at this point that we have made a low. So that way we can put that to bed right now. I'm not in the business of picking tops and bottoms. So if you feel like you're going to go out there and do that, just let you know that I teach my big group not to do that. And I don't go out there actively trying to do that either. But we're going to go into a deep dive of market structure inside this area. Now, before I do this, I want you to understand this part. This is the part that seems boring. This is the part that gets the most complaints from those individuals that will never, ever do well or succeed in this. Because they want five-minute trainers for something that's extremely technical. And you just can't strip it down to very easy ideas okay so it's gonna take a little bit of study thinking and homework of you going through old price data and you'll start seeing these things but i promise you this video will cause a light bulb moment for you and you'll start to see things that are in the charts all the time but you are not aware of it and they're also bueno, de momento se está diciendo que este video de hora y cuarto este este tostón va a cambiarnos nuestra forma de ver eh, la estructura del precio me gusta vamos a ver the old moves and see that this is in fact very true and you can use it to confirm or negate a price move I get a lot of questions through trading view, people posting, hey, you know, can you answer this for me? Can you answer that for me? I don't make it a business of doing that because I don't have a lot of time for it, but I use those questions in these talking points in my lectures, not only in this mentorship, but in my private group. So the questions I get a lot is how do I know if I'm going to sell above old high? How do I know it's not going to keep going higher? Well, that's the underlying market structure and the trust in the factors that I'm going to kind of like teach you tonight. Me teaching it to you is not going to transpose my trust. That has to be developed in your learning curve. It's going to take time. How long is it going to take? I don't know. All of you are going to do it differently. But you're going to arrive right on time. Exactly when you should, that's when you're going to get it all. Okay? It's a matter of how much time and effort you put into studying it. Because these candlesticks, you can make them say anything you want. You beat no them and submit no to anything. No te duermas. But you want to know what they're likely to be hinting at. And I'm going to give you those clues tonight. But in here, we're going to take a deep dive into that price action right there. All right. So we are looking inside that Fairbury gap in the daily chart. This was the high end of that Fairbury gap. And this was the low end of that Fairbury gap. The time frame on this chart, as you can see here. A ver, a ver, espera, espera, que tenemos aquí un hater. Tenemos un hater. Dejarme leer lo que han puesto. <laughs> Se ha tomado la molestia de hacer un buen párrafo, eh. Tengo que decirlo. Eso primero, enhorabuena. Easy Money Baby dice: Brother, no es hate, bro. No, tranquilo, tranquilo, tranquilo. No, si aquí to todo que tiene cabida. Siempre y cuando sea bajo el respeto. Brother, eso no sirve para nada. Los verdaderos institucionales operan con cinta, Doom y Market Profile. Olvídate de ICT, SMC y toda esa mierda porque no sirve para nada. Te recomiendo el canal de Market Profile. Lo puedes buscar en YouTube y verás cómo operan los institucionales y los trading floor de verdad. Esto lo digo a malas, ni nada, o simplemente para que le eches un vistazo y que poco a poco la gente se dé cuenta. Nada más. Pues Easy Money Baby. 
lo primero, no digas mierda, porque aquí prácticamente todos operamos así y nos va muy bien, realmente nos va muy bien. Lo que sí que te voy a pedir, que si me puedes pasar a mí el enlace por privado, te lo agradezco, porque sí que es verdad que es uno de los temas que quería empezar a, a tocar. El tema de Market Profile, volumen y tal, así que si me lo puedes pasar y tú dominas del tema, porque yo no tengo ni idea, me encantaría empezar a aprender. Dicho esto, seguimos, gente. Bueno, and I've outlined market structure in the idea of long-term high, long-term low, short-term high, short-term low, and in between those two swing points, there's an intermediate term high and an intermediate term low. When we look at price, we're not looking for just the simple higher high, higher low, therefore it's a bullish market or uptrend. That's not what I'm looking at. I'm looking at, does the market have a reason to go up for buy side liquidity or buy stops? Or is it likely to go up to rebalance and imbalance, which is like a period like that? Or is it likely to go lower to sweep out short-term lows for sell side liquidity or sell stops? Or is it likely to go down? Fijaros, ay, es que los nombrecitos de Michael de verdad que a veces me pone nervioso. Fijaros que ahora pone LTH, LTL, STH, ITH, que es long term, uh, long term high, long term low, short term high, short term low, y uh, creo que es intermedial, algo así, intermedial term high, intermedial term low. ¿Vale? O sea, es decir, tiene estructuras, eh, tiene calibres de estructuras, ¿no? Lo que serían extremos, medios y cortos, ¿sí? Para que nos vayamos haciendo una idea, ¿vale? Que es también lo que yo digo a veces, que el, el tema de la de qué, qué time frame está bien, todos son buenos los time frames. Pero claro, tienes que eh, ser acorde a lo que estás viendo. Sí, estructura interna y externa, correcto. Gracias, Hanabifrox. The number one question that I have before I... Que de hecho, sí que yo alguna vez, eh, no con nombres, pero si os sirve, eh, va bien hacerlo con colores. En MetaTrader, hacer puntitos de colores es un rollo, pero eh, en TradingView sí que lo podéis hacer. Por ejemplo, para eh, grados de colores, ¿no? Para bajistas, pues yo qué sé, azul, verde y otro color azul, intermedio... Y para a, arriba, pues rojos, naranjas y rosas, por decir algo. Y os vais marcando estos tipos de estructuras. Yo voy dando pequeños detalles, ya que vamos viendo el vídeo, lo voy comentando. I sit down in front of my charts. That's what I'm looking for. What is the current market narrative? What is it likely to be doing right now? I don't care about patterns in price action. I don't care about anything harmonic. I'm not looking for any kind of Elliott waves. I'm not looking for any kind of ratio idea. I'm not looking for anything that you can attribute to a retail mindset. Nothing, except for those two questions. Is it likely to go up for stops or go down for stops? Or is it going to go higher to rebalance or lower to rebalance? Now, how do I arrive at that idea? Is, is it going to go higher or is it going to go lower? Because it kind of leans on that question I told you many times. If there's one question I get asked the most, it's teach me bias. In other words, you want to know where's the market going next? And that's good. That's the next draw on liquidity. But the daily range will not always submit to that bullish or bearish right from the opening go higher or right from the opening go lower. Sometimes you'll have consolidation intraday. And you may have been trying to take a trade that was based on an idea that you came to that would be bullish. And maybe it did give you an opportunity to be in a trade that was profitable for a period of time, but you held on to it thinking the daily range was going to keep on going higher, and it turned on you. These ideas I'm going to teach you in this lecture here will help you identify the likelihood that your idea has probably been proven inaccurate, but you have to be receptive to the clues that price is giving you. That's the number one reason why I abandon indicators. And if you have anything on the charts that cover up candles or draw your attention to something that you're putting on the chart, and I call that you know, facetiously lipstick, okay? That's what this chart is showing here. It's just lipstick. It's me communicating how I am internalizing this price structure, this fractal in price, I'm looking at it with this idea. Now, I'm looking at it in a matter of seconds. I come to this conclusion. I'm looking at the highs, and I'm looking at the relationship between each swing high, each swing low, and I'm coming to a conclusion, studying one swing at a time. And I'm going to come up with the idea that it's likely to go lower because that daily chart, I called it in front of all of you. I outlined it, told you where it was going to go. So that way we understand one another. I'm teaching something that I already proved before the fact. So it's not like me coming back to this area here because if you haven't watched the videos prior to this, say you just found this YouTube channel, you're watching this one, it sounds like the typical guy that comes on YouTube and says, here's something that happened, you know, and I can sound and, look, and appear smart because it's already happened and I have no real risk in being wrong. I told you it was going to go lower from here, and it did. Now I'm going to take you inside that price action and outline what it is that I look for, what it is that I looked for at the time, and how I felt confident it was going to go lower. Okay. So right away, we know that price is straight up to the high end of that fair value gap. And again, this level here is that daily chart. Let me go back up one chart. That's this level here. Okay. It's on this candle, that low, okay. and the low of the fair value gap is this candle's high. Dropping down into the hourly chart, that's the high end of the fair value gap. This is the low end of the fair value gap. Again, on an hourly chart, so that way we have our bearings. Vale. So when the market traded up into and just above that fair value gap high, this red level here. Once it started to break down and go lower, it traded back down into this candlesticks high. So we're trading back inside this range, and we're range-bound. Since I am expecting the daily chart to be the parent of this price structure, all minor lower time frame swings are going to be subordinate to it. And what does that mean? This now is a long-term high. I do not expect this high to be broken to the upside. 
Should it be broken to the upside, that means that my daily analysis, expecting this level here to hold price and to be a factor in the algorithm repricing and going lower at a later time, if it goes above that, then I'm probably wrong in my analysis. So therefore, I demand more information by studying more price action sitting on my hands. Or, if I have a trade on, it means that I have to admit that I'm wrong. Vale, hasta aquí es importante que entendamos lo que ha dicho. Eh, lo más importante para mí, y que es exactamente lo que yo hago, es siempre te vas a guiar en diario, que es lo que ha dicho. Y dentro del diario vas a definir un rango, que es lo que ha hecho él. En, esa en ese fade value gap, ma marca el rango. Alcanza el máximo del rango y viene abajo. Bien, pues ya tengo definido un rango, el alto y el bajo. Si observáis, ahí está el long term high, long term low, ¿vale? Alto y bajo. Pues bueno, tiene un rango definido. Y todo lo que sea en trabajar en temporalidades horarias o de minutos, va a mandar siempre el rango diario, lo que tú has visto en diario. Por eso, él... Está bien que aquellos que, quizá aquellos que ya tenemos más habilidad, más práctica, quizá no, no lo necesitamos esto, pero aquellos que quizás no tenéis tanta habilidad o tanta práctica, o quizás si la tenéis, estaría bien que fuerais marcando estructuras internas, la estructura interna del rango, ¿vale? ¿Cuál es el alto más alto que ha dejado el precio? ¿Cuál es el, el alto intermedio? ¿Cuál es el alto corto? Esto está muy bien para no perder el norte, que muchas veces se pierde el norte de las operaciones porque uno no sube a diario y no marca el rango que quiere trabajar. Y esto es muy importante, lo que acaba de decir Michael, que es lo que hago yo y casi siempre todos los análisis que me veis a mí, siempre empezar de diario. En el stop out that may occur is just me managing risk. It's a losing transaction. It does not mean your model is flawed. It does not mean that you are a failed trader. It just means that that transaction was not a profitable one. And it's just cost of doing business. But as long as price remains below this high, my idea is this is a long term high. Because it's framed on what? A higher time frame resistance level. If we want to talk in terms of retail ideas, that way we can understand something in a simplistic manner. But we'll build on the ideas that will help move you away from simple support resistance ideas. So this long-term high should remain intact. In other words, price should not go higher than that. We trade down to the discount level of the low end of that fair value gap. And it starts to find support, rallies back up, trades near the high, but does not take that out. Very important. Once it starts to break down, consolidate in here, retail ideas will see a lot of trust in the idea that's potentially a bull flag. I love seeing those patterns because I like to fade them. So that's a false bull flag. And when we see price break down like this, and then rally back up, every single time, this is important, this is the part where you start writing down these details. Every single time, price rebalances and imbalances. Like we have this candle's low, this candle's high, we have that one single candle passing down like that. Once that rebalances by going up here, that swing high, from this high, this high, and this high, that's a swing high right here. I immediately label that in my mind, not on my chart, because I don't want anything distracting me. If I have these things written on my chart at the time, it's going to be a distraction to me. But Mira, lo que acaba de decir, que yo también lo dije en el curso, pintar el gráfico y no lo borréis para no perder el norte, pintar el gráfico y dejarlo ahí. Muchas veces me habéis preguntado, profe, dejamos todo pintado, dejarlo todo pintado, porque así no vais a perder el norte, que es lo que él está diciendo ahora. The way I'm internalizing it, you'll see what I mean as I go through this lecture. Every rebalance of an old imbalance, that swing that's created at that moment, I immediately label that in my mind as an intermediate term high, or in this case, as we came back down to filled in this by dropping down here, that's an intermediate term low. What does that mean? What's the significance of that? Typically, what you'll see is an intermediate term low has a higher short term low to the right of it and a higher short term low to the left of it. This intermediate term low forms by rebalancing, but it has a higher short term high here. But then the market trades over here off this short term low. It rallies up, but it fails. It fails in here. We're going to anticipate that failure. Whereas if you're looking at this low, high, higher, low, failed, higher, high, higher, low. Mm -hmm. So what's forming here? A pennant or a triangle pattern, right? How do you know which side's going to break out? That was one of the questions I had all the time as a developing student back in the 90s. 1992, 1993, I was buying every book I could get my hands on. And I got the book, the John Murphy Technical Analysis of the Financial Markets book, which is the Retail Trader's Bible. Okay, That book is so useful in terms of just reading it and knowing what not to do, because that's what the 90% crowd follows when you look at price action. Still to this day, because it's always regurgitated in some way, shape, or form. Someone's teaching that same idea of trending trend lines, which are so subjective. How do you know what swing low to attach for a trend line? There's lots of swing lows in here. How do you draw it? It's all subjective. So you have to have a way to reduce it down to, I hate to say it like this, but it really is no better way of saying it, but you have to break it down into a science. We don't do technical analysis. We do technical science. Okay, You have to be able to relate to certain things, weigh out and measure what these factors are within price action, which is not based on hypothetical guesswork or some kind of a harmonic animal pattern, which to me makes no sense. You have to look at the relationship to price action and the relationship of how it behaves. What is it indicating? What is it showing? The market has traded higher than consolidated. We fail to go above this important high back here. That's a long-term high. Then we have an intermediate term high. Why? Why is this an intermediate term high? Because we have a short-term high here and a short-term high here. So between two short-term highs, 
the highest high between those, that's an eight ringtone high. But the main takeaway for your notes so far is anytime a imbalance, like this big candle up, is rebalanced, that becomes an intermediate term low. Just as well on the opposite end, this down move here, that's a fair value gap. As soon as it rebalances there, that's what I classify as an intermediate term high. Now here's where we take a huge step forward. Classically defined by Larry Williams, you can see where I made a departure from his works. Okay, It was very influential in the beginning of my development, and it was a point of argument. Long-term secrets to short-term trading, Larry Williams. Hostia, eh, pues mira, ya tenéis, si alguno pe, mm, le gusta leer, ya tenemos librito para, para leer. Bienvenido al canal de Trading Forex TV Directos, en donde vemos estrategias y analizamos y reaccionamos a otros canales. Si todavía no estás suscrito, suscríbete y activa la campanita para que te lleguen todas las notificaciones. Muchas gracias. Long term seconds to short term trading. Oye, si alguien lo tiene, de casualidad, que me lo comparta, porfa. Si alguien lo tiene. No creo que sea difícil de encontrar. Pero si alguien lo tiene, que me lo pase. Internally with me, when I was watching him teach it on his VHS course, the Futures Millionaires Confidential Trading course, that idea of his approach to market structure, he teaches a little bit of it in this book. Okay, so it's Long-Term Secrets to Short-Term Trading by Larry Williams. Um, there's not a lot of books. I have over 2,000 some books. And I can tell you literally, <laughs> there's a handful of books out of all my collection that are useful. And I can't bring myself to throw them away because number one, I paid a lot of money for them. And it's just nostalgia, you know, me chasing all that stuff in books and it's always the same stuff that never really works. The ideas that he teaches in this book here, they were taught in a early work by him in regards to market structure, how to internalize price structure, how to look at price, not just from higher, high, higher, low, because that's too myopic, okay? It's a pursuit, especially in this generation today. It's a pursuit of simplicity for the sake of simplicity alone, not for the sake of getting to the truth or the heart of the matter. And that's what makes me a stumbling block for many of you that are younger, because you want right now instant gratification. You want instant reward for the menial time that you invest. When it's surprising to learn that you're going to take a lot more time than you first thought it was going to take to learn how to do this exceptionally well. But for an additional view on how I built this understanding of price action, it originally came from his idea of market structure. But if you study what I'm going to show you in this video, but you're here, my paid group has never seen this before, and you're seeing it for the first time. Okay. So when you hear people talk about market structure, and they're looking for higher high, higher high, higher high, and having successive lower lows behind them, and then you have a failed higher high, and then it breaks the swing low right before that failed higher high, they look at that as a change in trend. Uh, not all the time. Many times that's a good buying opportunity for me because really that's just coming back down to a deep discount and I'm going to buy those and continue it higher. So it's a little tricky if you don't understand the higher time frame, which is what these red levels are. That's higher time frame. The hierarchy in parent to child price swings, okay, so that way the subordination that the smaller time frame price swings adhere to from the higher time frame is directly linked to the order flow on those higher time frame charts. So, in other words, what am I saying? The daily chart has the bulk of the volume that's coming into that marketplace. There isn't a lot of volume coming in on a one minute chart. That's not to change the importance or reduce the importance rather of a, of a one minute chart within the proper context and market structure that's underway. So you can use a one minute chart to navigate because as a smaller retail trader, which is who we all are, but we don't trade with retail logic. There's a, there's a separation from what we're trying to do in price versus the collective out there that learns from books and things like that. Now that may sound like the morning, so I'm pointing to a book right here on the screen, but the ideas that he teaches early in this book about market structure, I think is the whole, well, the only thing I found useful in that book. I have a lot of respect for this man, but out of that entire book, his discussions about market structure, that's the only thing I find that is useful from that book. So if you're reading anything else in that book, you know, great if you like it. But my only addition to this for more research, for more of a foundational idea where I got this from, um, you're going to hear people say, um, he teaches Larry Williams market structure. No, I don't. The ideas that came early on in my learning came from this man's interpretation of market structure. But I want to take you into the chart now and show you what he's not teaching in that book, what he hasn't taught in any of his works. And it gets a little bit closer to the heart of the matter. And you'll find it, it's, it's really interesting. So if we have a imbalance that's rebalancing, we have an intermediate term high. Shouldn't an intermediate term high have a lower short-term high to the right of it and a lower short-term high to the left of it? Yes. Mr. Williams says so in his book also. What I discovered in my own study, no one taught this to me, okay? I kind of pioneered this idea. See, a lot of these Instagram guys out there saying they pioneered something in the last two years of trading. <laughs> the idea of an intermediate term high not being higher than the short-term high to the left of it or the short-term high to the right of it. In other words, it's going lower. This an ideal scenario should be this high should be above both short-term highs, but it's not. It's not. So what is it doing? It's only rebalancing this. And where is it likely to go? Well, if you're thinking in terms of a pennant or triangle pattern, it's indicating to me as soon as this candle starts to go up like this, this candle and this candle. Why not this candle too? Well, this candle only has this low here. This candle is an up close, but this starts the last two up close candles right before this move down. This is important because we're going to look inside this shaded area and how we can use highly precise ideas within this order block. 
I'm anticipating this run up with these candles forming an order block where everyone else is teaching the idea of the last up close candle before the down move. That is not my order block. That is not my order block. So you need to stop teaching that because it's not accurate. Call it something else, but don't call it order block. This movement here, these two green candles that are going on, I'm watching these as they form live with the expectation because this imbalance has been rebalanced here. This swing high is an intermediate term high. I do not, I do not expect this high to be taken out. So I'm already forecasting and anticipating a failed price swing in here. Every time this green candles are forming, I'm looking at that as a bearish order block. So from the beginning of that candle's low, I'm looking in time on lower time frame charts. Lower than what? Well, this is a one hour chart. So what's the time frame below that? I dropped to a 15 minute time frame. Now, before I get any further, just know that the range between this long term high and this long term low, that range is going to be used for targeting purposes. And I'll get into that in a moment. But these up close. Hostia, vista sí, parece fácil, ¿verdad que sí? ¿Sí o no? ¿No os pasa lo mismo? Yo ahora, ahora viéndolo tal y como lo marca. Viéndolo, viéndolo tal, como, tal como lo marca. Y viendo esa zona que él marca, que rompe con imbalance y demás, y luego retrocede. Hostia, ahora lo veo como si fuera claro como el agua, ¿eh? Hostia, tío. A ver, ¿No os pasa cuando, cuando veis estos vídeos? Digo, hostia, sí, tío, ahora es, esto está... Esto está sí, sí, parece, parece fácil, y ahora está clarísimo. Hostia, yo hubiera entrado igual, hubiera entrado ahí, un stop arriba, y me llevo un 10 a 1. <ríe> eh, sí, Moni me dice, te lo he pasado por privado en Insta, son dos vídeos de media hora, el, el día que vayas a mirar el vídeo en directo, avísame si te acuerdas, y así me uno. Sin hate ni nada. Vale, gracias, chato. Y sin money, baby. Venga, va. Así tenemos más material que ver. Gracias, chato. Así que también cambiamos un poquito de Smart Money, que es muy monótono. Cuando estás en vivo te cagas. Sí, no, claro, claro, claro. Claro, claro, claro. Sí, sí, claro. Yo esto no sabría operarlo, ¿eh? Os lo, os lo reconozco. Visto así digo, ah, ahora entiendo. Esto es lo que tengo que buscar. Pero en el momento no sabría operarlo. Yo tengo otras cositas, pero esto así, no. Pero de lo que se trata, de aprender a hacerlo. Candles. From the hourly perspective, that's the range for my hourly order block. Inside that range, I can be hunting fair value gaps. Light bulb. <laughs> I don't need to see the market trade down below the last highest up close candle. I don't need that because I understand what I'm looking for inside market structure, actual market structure, not just higher, high, higher, low. I'm looking at the underpinnings of the marketplace and I'm examining what is it doing high to high, low to low within a higher time frame premise. Remember the premise was we were going to go up to this upper level here, rebalance, and then eventually trade lower down below. Sell side liquidity. In this fractal, I'm using this one here just to illustrate the idea. Mm. So, in other words, up here, it's going to make a short pattern, something bearish to get short on. Then, work towards going down to that low. Now, clearly, you can see it here. It does so nicely. But I'm going to take you into this price action right here. Before I zoom in, look closely. What do you see? Pause the video. I'm not pausing the video. Espera, 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 espera. Que lo repita, que lo repita. ¿Qué quiere que haga? Now, clearly, you can see it here. It does so nicely. But I'm going to take you into this price action right here. Before I zoom in, look closely. What do you see? Pause the video. A ver. Lo, lo tengo, lo, lo, estoy pegado a la pantalla, eh, gente. Eh, rompe el swing con imbalance. Eso es lo que veo. Lo que buscamos muchas veces. Hay una trend line, ¿no? Una trend line. Da el order block. No había generado un bajo más bajo. Bueno, y lo que veo es un Fairbell Gap. O sea, es decir, esa vela negra, la que sale del cajón rojo, sale con ineficiencia y cierra con ineficiencia por debajo, que es normalmente el tipo, el, el, la entrada por confirmación, la que yo di la clase el otro día. Vamos, yo creo que es esto, ¿eh? No sé vosotros qué veis, pero acercaros vosotros, digo yo que es lo que, lo que pasa ahí, ¿no? A ver, sorpréndeme, Michael. Eso es, un, eso es un triángulo. Un, tran, un triángulo. ¿Qué es un triángulo? <ríe> me va a trolear, estoy seguro. <ríe> me, va, me va a saltar alguna. <ríe> yo, diría, yo diría que es un bloste. ¿eh? Yo operaría esto con un buen bloste. <ríe> me voy a callar, me voy a callar. <ríe> yo, o sea, ya os lo diré lo que es el bloste. <ríe> triángulo. <ríe> vale, vale. I'm not pausing the video, I see team. <laughs> and you can't make me. All right? <laughs> right in here, you can see a small little imbalance. This one single candle like that, right there. That's the same thing that was occurring in this move here on the hourly chart that gets rebalanced there. Here, we have a smaller version of it. That is a fractal. That's something that repeats on a smaller or higher time frame that's similar in its formation. It won't be identical, but it's closely related to the general idea. 
If it trades back to this candle's high, don't worry, I'll zoom in in a moment. That's your entry right there. That's aggressive, and I don't have a problem being aggressive if I know what I'm looking for. But there's also an imbalance in here, and it rebalances that right there. See that? Now, once we establish the market structure on that hourly chart, I'm not going down into the lower time frames below it and marking out all the swing highs and swing lows either. No, that, that's overkill. I just need to know what I'm looking for on the time frame I'm trading on. The logic is based on the daily chart that it's going up into this imbalance to go lower. The hourly chart frames my trade. It gives me what I'm looking for to start hunting entry techniques. Now, the 15-minute time frame, that's the bellwether. This is where it's going to give me the actual get in, get out. But I might not like the risk parameters that's required on this time frame. So I can go down into lower time frames. Should price go lower and break lower, I'm looking at that short-term low here and that intermediate term low there. If we have a short-term low taken out and an intermediate term low taken out, or just an intermediate term low taken out, then we can go back to the previous long-term high, long-term low. Now, a long-term high, long-term low is generally going to be linked to a higher time frame daily chart. That might be a price range. It might be a high to a short-term low. In this case, I'm framing the idea and logic around that fair value gap that I outlined in front of all of you, saying it's likely to go up there, rebounds, and then go lower and take up that whole daily low. There's lots of ways you can frame your trade, but you have to have something directly linked to that daily chart because the daily chart, that's exactly what institutions are working off of. That's exactly what banks are working off of. That's where the money is. That's where your bias is going to be determined. That's going to be what makes or breaks your trend continuation, that daily chart. So the majority of your time and study should be on determining where that daily chart's going over the next day or two or a week. But you try not to forecast longer than a week. Not that you can't. I'm not suggesting that anyone can't do that. I'm just saying if, as a developing student, you want to keep your perspective limited to a five-day time horizon. And don't be upset if you don't have the entire weekly range forecasted correctly. That's not important right now. You're growing. You're trying to learn how to do this, and it's highly technical. No one gets it overnight. It took me six years. So, sí, wait. os voy leyendo, ¿eh? Um... Esa entrada la has hecho en un SP500 alguna vez. Puede ser, puede ser, puede ser. Porque entra dentro de mis confirmaciones. Quizá no con esta forma exactamente, pero algo similar. Camilo dice, mi cerebro va a estallar después de esta clase. No, de, en realidad es fácil. Lo que pasa es que como Michael le pone nombres a todo, parece difícil. Eh, simplemente dentro de una estructura de un rango hay el punto más alto, el punto intermedio y el punto bajo, digamos, ¿no? el, más, el más corto. ¿Quedará grabado? Sí, sí, luego esto lo edito y lo subo. Eh, en cuanto a estructura, lo único que está diciendo desde el principio, lo que pasa es que, claro, como el vídeo dura tanto y se enrolla tanto y habla de tantas cosas, te pierdes respecto a donde ha iniciado, ¿no? La, en realidad, si recuerdas, ha iniciado en diario, ha marcado una, inefi una ineficiencia, el precio venía trabajando dentro de este Fair Value Gap y una vez alcanzada el máximo y alcanzaba el mínimo, trazo un rango operativo, un rango con, donde el long Term, term high es este de aquí arriba y long term low es este de aquí abajo. Bien, pues ya tienes un rango marcado, el alto y el bajo del rango. Entonces, dentro de este rango estás esperando la, la mejor oportunidad. Que él marca esta en concreto, que perfectamente... Hola y bienvenido a la newsletter de análisis semanal con Smart Money Concepts. Desde ahora podrás suscribirte con una pequeña cuota mensual y recibir de forma semanal el análisis de 10 o más activos de los movimientos que estoy esperando del precio para la próxima semana. Encontrarás puntos de entrada, invalidaciones y la proyección del Take Profit en cada uno de los análisis. Así que, ¿a qué esperas? Suscríbete a la newsletter de Smart Money Concepts por tan solo desde 9,95 al mes. Además, tienes una membresía de una semana gratuita para probar el servicio. Encontrarás el enlace en la descripción de este vídeo para suscribirte a la nueva newsletter de Smart Money Concepts. También podía ser esta, esta de aquí, porque tiene eso aquí un, una ineficiencia, un imbalance, o esta de aquí, pero bueno, él en concreto marca esta. Por X motivo, por lo que sea, pues habrá marcado, ha mar, ha marcado esta. Si no me equivoco, ha marcado esta, porque dentro de la estructura que iba diseñando, digamos, esta era la que mejor, entre comillas, le encajaba, ¿vale? No es tan complicado, ¿eh? Lo que pasa es que es su forma de explicar, al final, te has perdido. Te has perdido de lo que quiere decir. Y esto es lo malo que tiene Michael realmente. It pays off if you stick with it. So we have a break below an return low. Then we have, what? A significant break in market structure. This is something that's more significant just simply than going into a chart saying, okay, well, it's got a short-term low, there it is. Uh -uh. See how much more detailed this is? What this tells me is, then I can start using this range high and low and start getting projections down. I can get a measurement of measuring this high to this low and start replicating that going down. And it'll give me price targets. They're generic price targets. If you don't want to use that targeting method, this long-term low to any term high, if price breaks below here, as it does here, you can simply take your Fibonacci, anchor it to the highest high, down to the lowest low, and this is what you get here. Why am I using that? Why am I not using this here to here? Because this return back up, this is where all of this move starts right there. 
This is just the beginning of the, the framework. This is where the swing begins on the decline. Follow what I'm saying? I'll say it again. This high and this low, that's your framework. The retracement that fails, that starts the decline, begins here at the intermediate term high. So if you anchor your fib to the intermediate term high down to that low, which is a long-term low, the projection is negative one and a half standard deviation, and there's your low. How much lower than this can it go? That's one way of determining it. Now I know what you're asking. What is your fib settings ICT? There's my fib settings. Okay. I don't talk about everything because I don't need all the lines, but I look at measurements like this with logic behind it. It's not just me randomly going in there because I get a lot of when I was on baby pits, I got lots of emails all the time and people would post in the forum. Why are you anchoring your fib to that swing high and that's and that swing high and not this swing high? This is what I never taught. This is what I'm showing you today. This is advanced market structure. This is not something you can find in books. Mr. Williams, I'm sure, doesn't even know it like this. He's rather simplistic in the way he does things. That's the only thing I've really gleaned from him. He's he's a legend, don't get me wrong, <laughs> but he does things rather simplistic. But, but because my background is computer programming and computer science and I have obsessive compulsive disorder, I need to know why things do what they do. And I need to know everything. Now, I don't know everything, but my pursuit of knowing everything led me to look at markets like this and internalize how what the algorithms are doing because there has to be a rhyme and reason, right? Like to suggest the idea that these markets are operating under an algorithm, and they're going up and down based on an AI. Artificial intelligence is controlling this. It's not your buying and selling pressure. I've said this many times before. But if that is true, and let's suspend your disbelief if you don't believe there's an algorithm. Bueno, aquí ya, no sé, no sé, bueno, desvaría un poco, ¿no? Descifrar el algoritmo y todo esto, ¿no? No sé, ¿eh? A ver, tiene cosas buenas y conceptos muy buenos, pero yo creo, creo que aquí ya desvaría un poco, ¿no? Gonzalo dice, si no estoy mal, este vídeo está relacionado con el... 10-11 de la mentoría. Recuerdo que estaba esperando un gap, además que venía del mercado bajista. Sí, correcto. Es, es, es que hace días que hicimos estos. Correcto, es la misma zona, ¿eh? Viene trabajando en la misma zona. De hecho, había otro vídeo, no sé si era antes o después, que él trabajaba esta zona de aquí. Nos recordáis que creo que trabajaba esta vela en concreto de aquí. Esta de aquí. O sea, una cosa muy rara, tío. And how does it reference how far to go up and how far to go down? It cannot see your stop. It doesn't see Michael's stop. It doesn't see Renee's stop. It doesn't see Juan's stop. It doesn't see Brian, Larry. That's outside of its capability. Brian. But it knows where people will have their stops based on these ideas. Short-term high, short-term low, long-term high, long-term low, long-term low, long-term high. And where the imbalances are. Now, I already know right now, at this moment, right now, your heads are spinning. You're probably sitting here looking at me, this is crazy. How do you come up with this? <laughs> and how the hell am I going to use it? <laughs> exactly. You're going to take time learning this. Line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little, there a little. It takes time to do this, okay? But I got requested to teach market structure, and this is my interpretation of market structure because I'm leaning on algorithmic principles that are in the marketplace that can't be taught to you, but I'm creating a language so that way you can see it visually in your chart and you can measure and reference certain things, not exactly like the algorithm does, but very, very close to what it's doing. Odio que se tira cinco minutos hablando de nada, tío. A ver... Vale, venga, va. Justo lo tiro para adelante y empieza a hablar serio. In the 50 minute time frame, it's obviously more candles. So in this up close candle series of one, two, three, four, five candles, in that range, if I get a fair value gap form with a breakdown like this, notice I don't need a swing low broken. Notice that? On the model I'm teaching you, you have to look for what? The short term low being broken, that's your market structure shift. Then you see price go up into that imbalance and you can go short, or vice versa when you're going bullish. If you understand market structure with this perception, looking at it from a higher time frame and anticipating a breakdown, but then starting to classify each imbalance and swing high and swing low, intermediate term highs and lows are formed at the rebalancing of an imbalance. Everything I already said in the video, okay, I'm just reiterating. If the intermediate term high is not higher than two short term highs, that is telling you that the market is very weak and the algorithm is tipping its hand to those people that are looking at it like this. Who would be looking at it like this? Smart money traders. Someone that's not looking at a chart okay, with harmonic. Saludos por la Argentina. ¿Conoces lo que él llama inversión? Cuando el fail value gap no se respeta, se revierte en inversión. ¿Conoces? ¿Lo aplicas? Ni idea, macho. Ariel Jo 44. Pásame el enlace de qué vídeo habla de esto. Si es la Mentos 2023, yo la verdad, la 2023 no me gusta nada, 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 nada. Lo siento, no me gusta nada, nada. Eh, voy bastante al día de todos los vídeos que ha sacado este año, ¿eh? Si es esa, pásamelo, ese vídeo en concreto, y lo, y lo vemos. Pero ya, la 2023 la estoy odiando, ¿eh? De verdad, no me gusta nada. Son un montón de flipadas. El, el TGIF, el NDOC, el NWOC, el... Pff, no hay nada claro en esta mentoría. Imbalance, rebalance, and liquidity. 
That is it. That's it. That's all they're doing. Now, framing that within the context of Forex, they would be utilizing the fundamental idea of interest rate differentials, which I'll talk a little bit about. Not in this lesson, but I've said we go into Forex. But right now, we're teaching price through this medium and index futures. But this stuff works in Forex. Period. Okay? There's no reason to question whether it's just only going to work in this. It works in all markets. This is your aggressive entry. You don't need a swing low being broken because you have the idea based on market structure suggesting that this is exceedingly weak. If it's exceedingly weak, that means the next short-term high, how do I know it's going to be a short-term high? I don't know because I'm studying the up-close candles because that's going to be an order block later on. Now, everybody else knows how to look at these candles after it goes below it and comes back up and bumps the bottom of that right there. So the bottom of that rectangle, that's the classic ICT bearish order block. The advanced interpretation of an order block would be using market structure like this, which is unconventional, but you start seeing the imbalances inside the order block when you're already expecting it to sell off. See, this entry term high, I already know that this rebalance here classifies this in my mind as an entry term high. That means it should not trade above that high. Just like this short term high and this short term high did not trade above this entry term high. Why is this entry term high when it didn't even rebalance anything? Didn't think I'd get to that question, did you? <laughs> He's reading my mind. <laughs> Here's a long term high. Here's a swing high over here and a swing high over here. See that? Long term high, right? Enemy term high, short term high, short term high, or if you want to use this one, I'm using this one, not classifying this one because this is energetic, it moves lower. You could have easily had a short term high marker there, but I'm using this one because it has that run lower to rebalance. The enemy term high has a lower short term high to the left of it and a lower short term high to the right of it. So, enemy term highs, there's two classifications. It is a short term high that has a lower short term high to the left of it and a lower short term high to the right of it. Or, and this is the main one here, it trades back up to rebalance and imbalance. That immediately becomes an enemy term high. Now, the usefulness of that is. If we're bearish and it rebalances like this, the next short-term high should be lower than that enemy term high. If it trades higher than that, then your trade idea is probably... A ver, a ver, a ver, esto que ha dicho lo último. That immediately becomes an enemy term high. Now, there's two classifications. It is a short-term high that has a lower short-term high to the left of it and a lower short-term high to the right of it. Or, and this is the main one here, trades back up to rebalance and imbalance. That immediately becomes an enemy term high. Now, the usefulness of that is, if we're bearish and it rebalances like this, the next short-term high should be lower than that enemy term high. If it trades higher than that, then your trade idea is probably... El intermedio está en mitad de dos cortos. Creo haber entendido, y corregirme si, si me equivoco, de largo plazo, corto, intermedio, corto. O sea, es decir, cuando genera primero un corto, luego uno intermedio, luego un corto, y el corto tiene que ser más bajo o más alto que el intermedio, en este caso. En este caso, si la estructura es bajista, debe ser más bajo que el intermedio. Creo haberlo entendido así. Ahora cobra más sentido todo esto. Si no me equivoco, ¿eh? Si alguien ha entendido, ha entendido lo mismo. Vale, gracias, Jotrin flawed, don't force that trade. Again, wait for market structure to get back in sync with what you're expecting. Something bearish. That's how you keep from blowing your account or forcing your will in the marketplace. Now let's go back into the order block. Inside these candles as it's going up, I'm looking at lower time frame charts, and this is a 15-minute time frame. We see it break down. It doesn't take any short-term blowout, but it's inside these up-close candles, which is an hourly order block of two candles each. The imbalance trades up into it. That's your aggressive sell. Your stock could be right above the high. The classic low-risk, high confirmation short entry is the classic return back to the order block after trade down below it. Here's your little gap. Here. Trade into it. There's your short. Where's your stop? Above this candle's high. There you go. Now, you can go down into the charts. Vale, abajo a cinco minutos, eh? Deeper with your five, four, three, two, and one, narrowing down to a small. Yo esta la primera no la veo, eh? Yo la, esta la primera no la veo. La primera no la veo. La segunda sí. Esta sí, porque ya tengo. Esta vela con ineficiencia me rompe, ¿vale? Porque hasta que no rompe eso, para mí puede ser una inducción. Pero la segunda sí. La primera para mí ya un poquito agresiva y short, ¿vale? Aquí lo tiene puesto. ¿Podríamos considerar como zona de reacción desde la vela negra que está después del Fair Value Gap? STH. He visto esa reacción repetidas veces gráficos pasados. Sí, es lo que dice. Agresiva y short. Él la, ve, la considera como agresiva. A la primera que hay una ineficiencia, ¡pum! Dentro. Para mí, personalmente, no me viene de, de 10 pips. ¿eh? 
Por aquí me da pregunta. Buenas tardes, por una pregunta. ¿Qué día se estabas operando en directo? Antes operaban los lunes. Sí, Jonathan, opero los lunes. Lo que pasa es que estamos en verano, en agosto, y hago medio vacaciones. Solo estoy haciendo para, digamos, para los grupos privados. Que además agosto, son, agosto y Navidad son meses muy malos. No... Sí que uh, se puede operar, lógicamente, como siempre, pero no son grandes meses de... Ya lo habéis visto esta semana, el precio se ha movido esta semana prácticamente, ¿vale? Pero son meses muy malos normalmente. En septiembre ya vuelvo a la carga a tope otra vez. Paul, ¿logré fondearme? ¡Ole, Seje Males! ¡Qué máquina! Cuéntanos, cuéntanos qué has hecho para fondearte. ¿Cuál es tu truco, tu estrategia? Un día tengo que hacer una entrevista aquí en, en, en Twitch y me gustaría traer traders que me expliquen un, sus dos mejores setups ¿Qué es lo que buscan para hacer una buena entrada, gente? ¡Hola esa gente! Sois los mejores, tío La verdad que la calidad del chat es brutal, ¿eh? Time frame. You can see that the last two candles here. Pagué We muchos cursos Bueno, the pues están... Oye, gemales, pagué muchos cursos Pues están servido si ha... si ¿Son los nuestros o, o son otros? Espero que sean los nuestros Si has pagado muchos cursos y son los nuestros Y has conseguido fondearte eh... Eso significa... Que hemos hecho buen trabajo y tú también. <laughs> the shade pink box. But these last two candles here, with the gap, that low is exactly to the quarter point. Is that candle's high right there? Don't take my word for it. Go into your charts. Hostia, espérate que estás buena. Hasta que después encontré tu curso de Wyckoff más ICT gratis y con eso no más. <laughs> o sea que no has pagado. Has pagado a otros, pero a mí no me has pagado. Habías visto gratis. Bueno, me alegro, de verdad que me alegro un montón. Pero ya te digo, tú imagínate... Los cursos que tenemos de pago. Ya después de fondearte, esto sería la hostia. Pero vamos, te voy a encender la luz, gente. Paga muy bien. A ti ni un duro, pero me encantaría conocerte alguna vez. ¡Qué cabrones sois! Pues, gente, cuando queráis. Ya sabéis que yo, yo ya he visto algunos de, de la comunidad. Dave, por ejemplo, fui a ver la Ibiza. Yo no tengo problema en pasar... En pasar a veros, me encanta viajar y así tengo una excusa. De algo mal en tus cursillos. <ríe> algo valdrán, algo valdrán. No sé, that is exactly the perfect delivery to that candle as well. What's so, why am I pointing that candle? Because the order block is one consecutive series of up close candles. It's not the last candle before the down move. <ríe> you can tell where these folks learned, what lessons I taught from, and where they parodied from. But order block theory is much more than just simply the last up close candle before the down move or the last down close candle before the up move. That's not it. This is it. You have the up close candles together here with the imbalance inside of a larger quarter block within the bearish market structure because we have an intermediate turn high here. And this run up is going to fail to go back above this high. Now, I know some of you are like, this is too much. There's no, how am I going to be able to go the chart and be able to do this? You're not going to right away, but you need to go back to your data and your charts and start breaking them down and classifying them like this. You have the benefit of hindsight. That's how I began to trust it because I would go through old data and start breaking them down and looking for these things right here. That's how I bridged what I learned about how the algorithm prices and folks price. And then I made a language within price charts that communicates very closely what it's doing. This is the language that I've created for all of you to understand what it is I'm trying to interpret to you that have never seen this before. The imbalance here, it goes over a little bit, that's okay. But inside this range in here, more specifically, the order block, the hourly right here, that's where your fill would be, or aiming with your limit order. And the heat on the trade would be on this candle's movement there, which your stock will be above here. But you're aiming for a very large... Eh, ¿Vosotros operáis así cuando veis el Fair Value Gap? Estos son rangos, ¿vale? Fair Value, pum, nuevo, bajo, rango ¿Vosotros ponéis el stop por encima del, del, del anterior rango? Yo no, yo, yo utilizo dos rangos, ¿eh? Yo utilizo dos rangos, no utilizo uno, ¿eh? Utilizo dos, ¿eh? Me curo en salud porque a veces te hace, te hace, te hace una subidita trampa, ¿eh? Yo, yo lo reconozco como pero, ¿vale? Sí que es verdad que pierde ratio, pero... Me ahorro algún stop, ¿eh? Yo no, por el máximo de time frame mayor. Sí, yo, yo, sí, yo prácticamente lo pondría... Si yo hago mi entrada aquí, que es una de las tipos de entrada que, que haría, eh, lo pondría por encima del STH. Yo depende de dónde venga el fair value. Sí, lo que yo digo, ¿no? Tienes un fair value, pum, y sale del order block. Él dice, de, aquí está la típica entrada, 50% del rango y el stop aquí arriba, en el último fair value, y, y bueno, en este caso sale bien. Pero que yo digo... Son dos rangos, ¿no? El, el rango del primer Fair Value y el rango del segundo. Esto es muy personal, ¿eh? Yo lo pongo en el segundo, encima del segundo. La 13-14 es la que hace, exactamente. Esa es la que te hace, la 13-14. Sí, señor. Downside objective. So the risk from entering here at the bottom of the hourly bearish order block, which is again represented by the bottom of that rectangle here. You're entering there. The heat or the drawdown in the trade is limited to just that candle. 
but your style has to be here, and you're expanding lower for a target that's many times over. Si deseas hacer los mejores cursos de trading, no olvides pasar por nuestro apartado de tienda. Aquí encontrarás nuestros dos cursos avanzados, curso de trading con Fibonacci y el curso de trading institucional. En cada uno de los cursos encontrarás la explicación de lo que vas a aprender en las próximas clases. Donde aparece el temario del curso podrás ver un PDF en donde se explica todos los temas y todas las clases que aprenderás. Además, actualmente tenemos campañas en donde el curso te puede salir de forma gratuita si te das de alta con nuestro broker afiliado. Si quieres más información o quieres adquirir este curso, únicamente tienes que añadirlo al carrito y realizar tu registro en la página web. En breve nos pondremos en contacto contigo para darte las instrucciones de cómo puedes empezar tus clases. No te lo pierdas. What your risk is. Dropping down to a four minute chart. Here's that same four block from the five minute perspective. It's a little skewed now because we're looking at four minutes. Each candle is four minutes in duration. Market trades up into that, hits it perfectly. Not this length anything on the four minute chart, but it's linked against that five minute chart. Hits it right there beautifully. Trades lower, comes right back up, trades into the top end that Break third gap on the higher time frame. Before we start dropping down, we have a little bit of movement no above it, and that's okay, because this market is very volatile right now. You can't demand the markets to always deliver with this level of precision. Sometimes you get this little coloring outside the lines, and that's okay. That's a matter of experience and time studying it and doing it. You anticipate a certain measure of imperfection and still submitting yourself to the idea that just because it went above that level doesn't mean it broke it and it's going to keep going higher. It's likely to do that, and if it does, don't freak out. Then the market trades lower and reaches for those targets. Now, what I want you to think about is when you see these patterns for entry, That's when I thought you had to look at market structure from an advanced perspective. I already know some of you are going to be very confused by this lesson, and I understand your confusion, but that confusion is reduced by you going in and looking at price data and start studying it. ¿Alguien está confundido con lo que ha explicado? Yo no, ¿eh? Yo lo he entendido bastante bien, ¿eh? No estoy nada confundido. Claro, es que nosotros... Es que esta es la 2022. Esto lo, eh, yo la, lo tenemos muy, ma, muy mamado ya, esto, ¿eh? Pero bueno, hay que hacerla, hay que acabarla, hay que completarla. Ya os digo, la 2023, fatal, ¿eh? Fatal. Yo la voy viendo, pero no me mola nada, lo siento. I'm looking at it. Las the idea is this. When you see an imbalance get rebalanced, the high formed, as it rebalances, that high should not be violated by price going higher than that if you're bearish. If you blend that with institutional order flow, what is institutional order flow? When you're bearish, all of your up-close candles should keep price from going higher than them. What does that mean? We have an imbalance here. Market trades up into the bullish candles that are on the five-minute chart. We're on a four-minute chart. That's that red level here. Let me go back up to show you know. That's this one here. This is a down-close candle right here. These are the last two up-close candles before the displacement here and then balance. Market trades back up into that right there. There's your bearish order block. It gets aggressive, but if you know what you're looking for, that's very, very fun to do that. On the four-minute chart, there's that same return back to that five-minute bearish order block. Watch what happens. Market breaks lower, so we have up-close candle and up-close candles. The market trades higher, yes, but does it overtake this up-close candle? No, just trades back up into it a little bit. Mira, it... las, los únicos setups que el TGIF, el TGIF, uh, Thanks Good is Friday, ese es mío. Ese es mío. Lo saqué yo antes. Lo tenéis en el módulo de precio y tiempo. Vais allí, vais, miráis el temario y, 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 y se llama ending, ending, ending Week Friday Distribution. Es mío. Me lo ha copiado a mí, os lo juro. Lo saqué antes que él, hace un año. Antes que él, el TGIF. Y la Silver Bullet. Y luego el, re el resto son en docs, en walks y cosas así que no me gustan nada, no deja nada claro. Pero el TGIF es mío, os lo juro, por Dios que es mío, me la ha copiado. Os lo juro, ¿eh? Os lo juro, os lo juro. Si vais a verlo, que es mío, ¿eh? Os lo... Me cago en Dios, es que de verdad que es mío, os lo voy a enseñar. Mira, aquí está. ¿Se ve? ¿No se ve? Sí. No se ve. No se ve, no sé por qué no se ve. Bueno, ya os lo enseñaré. Go above. Vaya, mira, tío. Wow, that's important because if it doesn't overtake these up close candles here or here, it doesn't even need to get to these because it hasn't even overcome this one. So it acts as real resistance. That's institutional order flow. Your market when it breaks again from the consolidation in here, all these up close candles never get reached into again here at all. But notice what we got over here. We have up close candles. The market leaves it. Then it comes right back up. Does it overtake these up close candles? No, so it's going to remain heavy. So in short, I've taught you tonight to look at the markets from a market structure perspective. By breaking down the price swings, labeling them, Wait. specifically an imbalance that's rebalanced, that intermediate term high or low should not be violated. That's a key high or a key low. Joder, that bro. sets the stage for a market move that que, should que unfold tonti. and deliver to a higher time frame objective. In this case, as we outlined in the beginning, I showed you last week and before that that we were looking for weakness in NASDAQ to take out its daily low. 
If you combine that logic with market structure and the imbalance rebalance because area term highs and lows, those key highs and lows with them not being violated, if they are violated, that means your idea is wrong. And you cancel the idea and you don't try to go and enforce it again and overtrade and blow your account. While the market is moving in your favor, you're going to continue to trust that move and hold on to your trade because if you're bearish, up close candles should keep price below it for them if it's multiple up close candles. They're speed bumps. They may come back up and touch them and act as a what? Bearish or block. But you do not want to see them traded above if you're bearish. And vice versa, if you're bullish, when price is moving higher, generally the candles will be predominantly green in my case. Green candles when it's coming higher. Whatever your candle color is on your platform, predominantly there's going to be more up close candles when it's bullish. But down close candles should support price. If it trades back down to them, it's going to act as a support structure for an order block. So I've given you two main components to market structure and institutional order flow. How to know when the move is still good and not be afraid. And how do you know when the move is likely to be dynamic? And how do you know when the idea is probably flawed and your interpretation or your analysis is wrong? If that intermediate term high or low is broken, after your trade idea becomes possible, if that intermediate term high is broken and you're bearish, then you gotta move to the sidelines and don't go in again. Wait for more setups in the future. It may be in the same trading session or maybe in the same trading day or it may require you to trade in the following week. You just can't force it. I taught you institutional order flow, which is again, I've already mentioned this in the previous lessons where we're, we're bullish and we're expecting price to higher. Generally, there is not a lot of down close candles in that price going higher. But those down close candles should support price should it trade back down into them and not see them over lapped and always going down below it. If it does, it's only permissible if there's a short-term low in close proximity to it, and it's then likely to just go down and take out some sell stops if it's bullish, and then reaccumulate and go higher. If there is no swing low, there would be no swing low with sell side below it, so there's nothing to concern yourself with. Just look for down close candles to support price higher. So in other words, price swings that are bullish, down close candles are your support. In price swings that are bearish, up close candles are your resistance. Now, if you blend these ideas together, you get a perspective on price that cannot be gleaned from other teachers, educators, traders, authors, gurus, or whatever. But these are my responses to folks that ask me, how do I know what swing high and what swing low to use? As you can see, it's not a question that I can go in and say in one simple statement, this is what I'm doing. It takes deeper thought, it takes study, and it has to require supportive lessons that there's still going to be needed for the majority of you that are sitting here listening to me and you're saying, okay, I can see what you're saying. I can see it. There's no way I would have came to that conclusion on my own. Nobody would expect you to. You're too new. You haven't been doing enough. And frankly, I've never taught this before. This is what I've kept close to my best. But I want to give and I want to share, but you're not going to understand this in one lesson. Tiro para adelante, eh? Se han balado, se han balado, se han balado, se han balado. Venga, va. For us to anticipate a run down below here. This is just rebalancing for another leg lower to go down here. So we have had that in price. It's delivered, but now we're back above that low. So what does that mean for us? Well, on the daily chart, it's been bearish, but we're back above this old low. That is, in my mind, do nothing. We're neutral right now. Why? Why would you be neutral? Can you still be bearish? Yes. Hostia, Can you be sí. bullish? If you want to go against... Can I be Dice, una hora de video para que me digan en el Facebook de Gap. La verdad que sí, eh. Uh, la verdad que eh, este tipo tiene un problema, eh. Tiene un problema. Yo, yo, las primeras mentorships no eran así, iba bastante más al grano, eh. Tenía sus, sus delirios, pero hostia, ahora, fuá, tío. Le cuesta ir al grano, eh. Le cuesta ir al grano, eh. Te cuento una película gorda, eh. Pero bueno, venga, va, es Michael, se le perdona. Of the daily time frame, <laughs> you know, it just brings with it a greater measure of risk. Now, there's going to be times where you can go back in the chart and say, but yeah, look at this time. Anybody can do that. I'm looking at the hard right edge right now. And my paid mentorship group is here in this video just like you are. I am neutral right now. I am not taking any trades. There's a lot of things going on globally. There's a lot of confusion right now. Money is running scared in the marketplace. And I don't see where we're going next with a great deal of certainty. So, what did I just say to you publicly? I don't know. <sighs> what do you say? I think I said you don't know something. He doesn't know what the market's going to do. Right, right now, I don't know. So if I don't know, and if I can't classify it based on things I'm looking for in price, yes, it could possibly go a little higher. This could be the low. It could be some kind of reversal. They could you know, stop doing what you're doing over there in Europe and in Ukraine and everything becomes happy and nothing happens bad again for a couple months and markets go higher. I don't see that right now. I don't know if it's going to continue going lower. Where it's at right now, neutral. Because I can't justify it. one-sidedness. Okay, this is how I teach my, my peer group. The things I teach them, if you can't go into your charts and line up an idea that's bullish and have no way to frame it on a bearish stance, in other words, if you can very easily communicate it in your analysis that it's likely to go higher, but it's a real hard stretch to sell it for a bearish idea. That's high probability. If you can frame it bearish, but have a hard time defining it in a bullish perspective, that's high probability. Now, how many trades have you taken in your time as a trader where eh, it could go either way, but uh, what the hell, I got time. I'm in front of the chart. Somebody's going to see what happens. And you enter the market, and then you lose. What happens after that? You have a lot of regret. And you know what you're thinking. I don't even know why I did that. That was dumb. Why did I get into the marketplace? Everyone's done that. Everyone has done that. And I have blown accounts doing that. 1990s, I was reckless, did whatever I wanted to do, and none of it was really hinged on sound logic. It was me discovering risk because I didn't respect it when I first went into it. But I found it real hard that it hurts, and you don't want to go through that. So this brings this lesson to conclusion tonight, and I am absolutely certain that you have a litany of questions and concerns and confusions. All of those things get answered over time 
spending time with me, looking at examples, and you'll see it over time. It cannot be understood in one lesson. It absolutely cannot happen. And I know some of you young guys are going to want to post in the comment section, I understand exactly what you said. I've seen this 15 times before. Don't. I, I don't look at those messages and think to myself, wow. And I'm not going to let that message be posted to the video comment section. I'm not looking for you know, messages that fluff me up. I'm just looking for ones that I like. Okay, and... Tiene, quedan 10 minutos de video y se está despidiendo. No me jodas. No. No, no explica nada. A ver, ahora... I'm not trading crypto, I've never traded crypto, and I'm not touching stocks. No, 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 no explica nada, 10 minutos de despedida y de desviaz. De... No me jodas, Michael, a ver. If those things were real, and they had factors that really made price go higher or lower, answer this for me. This is the real you need to figure out, okay? How does the market know which discipline it's going to follow any given day? Is it going to follow harmonic animal patterns? No, no. Or is it going to follow heavy no. Or is it going to use supply and demand? Or is it going to use volume profile? Is it going to use white off? Is it going to use the patterns that's found on range bars? Is it going to use what's... That's it. No dice nada. No yeah, dice... Qué Without cabrón. Hay que ser muy cabrón, ¿eh? Sí o no. Diez minutos de nada. De nada. Yo hago vídeos de diez minutos explicando algo muy intenso. De forma muy intensa. Y el tío se tira aquí diez, trece minutos sin decir nada. No. Bueno, nos hemos ahorrado diez minutos, tío. Sí, para que reflexiones. Bueno, gente. Like a Michael. Bueno, ¿veis? Gente, no ha sido para tanto. No ha sido para tanto. O vídeo de hora y cuarto que nos teníamos que sacar de encima. A ver, no ha sido para tanta hora que ya lo hemos visto, pero he sufrido, ¿eh? Estoy, estoy sudando. Yo, yo necesito un, un baño en la piscina ahora mismo y tomarme un café y fumarme un cigarro porque esto ha destrozado mis neuronas. Uy, que se desenfoca la cámara. Ha destrozado mis neuronas para el resto del día, ¿eh? <risa> eh gente, eh, lo hemos conseguido. Vídeo de hora y cuarto de Michael ha estado bien. Hay que reconocer un paracetamol, un espirifén. <ríe> Mañana un espirifén. <ríe> eh, hay que decir que el día está bien. Le sobran 45 minutos de tostón. Porque la verdad, la verdad se ha dicho, tío. Esto se podía hacer en 15 minutos. Se podía hacer en 15 minutos. Es bastante Cabrón, Mike, tengo que decirlo. Qué buena siesta. <risa> Camila se ha despertado ahora y dice: Qué buena siesta. <risa> Mamma mía, es que se, sería 10-15 minutos, no más, este vídeo y se tira una hora y cuarto. Hay que ser mala gente, en serio, tío. Y encima, como él habla. Pero bueno, eh, son enfoques de vis, eh, puntos de vista, pues te va explicando el cómo lo ha deducido, de dónde lo saca, pues qué es lo que espera... Bueno, hay, hay cositas, ¿no? Hay cositas. Por eso estos vídeos, cuando los vas a ver, tienes que estar mentalizado que, eh, lo que, lo que a, a lo que te afrentas, ¿vale? De hecho, de esta mentorship son 42 vídeos, gente, y llevamos alrededor de 15. Nos queda poco más, poco más de la mitad, o sea, ya casi acabamos. Este 2023 no la, no la hacemos sí o sí. Este era de los vídeos eh, más largos, ¿eh? Los otros ya son un poquito más cortos. Así que este año vamos a acabar la mentor sí 2022 y que no digan que no somos Smart Traders y que no nos hemos visto los vídeos de Michael. Pues nos los vemos en vídeo poco a poco y los comentamos. Así que, gente, agradeceros a todos por acompañarme esta tarde a ver este tostón y no dejarme solo. Sé que algunos os habéis pegado una buena siesta. Espero que os <ríe> hayáis dormido bien y el resto hemos aprendido mucho. Así que eh, gracias a todos, chicos, y un besito y feliz trading a todos. Y nos vemos la semana que viene en el mismo horario, los mismos días. Besitos. Chao, chao. Chao.